Hey guys, Luma Llama here. I get asked a lot how I create my texture brushes, so I figured I would create a tutorial to show you guys. The main reason I use texture brushes is to add some extra detail to my shadows and highlights. I think it adds a little more visual interest than just using a solid color. So for example, on this pot here, I have a texture applied to the shadows and lighting. Now there are two main types of texture brushes that I like to create. If I go ahead and turn off the texture and I select the first type of brush, uh, the first one is, uh, it's like a grain noise type of brush. So right here I have a texture mapped to it and it kind of gives you this really nice soft uh, noise. And I do have a more classic noise brush here. So it really gives you this random, organic kind of grain and noise feeling. And the other brush is a more static kind of a texture. So for example, here's like a stone texture brush of mine. And this is really good for things like stone textures or fabric textures or anything where you really need to be able to tell kind of what it is. And I like having both types of texture brushes in my arsenal so I can pick and choose which ones I want to use. Now, if you don't want to take the time to create your own texture brushes or you kind of just want to see what some of the possibilities are or what my brushes look like, I have a pack of 30 that you can download in the description below. So make sure to check those out if you're interested. So for both types of brushes, I like starting with the soft brush, which is found in airbrushing. So I just create a duplicate of the soft brush and let's go ahead and edit that. And let's start with the grain brush. So for that one, you're gonna be mainly tweaking the shape. So think of this kind of brush as it's gonna be stamping on this shape pattern uh, every so often, and you're gonna dictate how often it gets stamped on. And each time it stamps, it's gonna be randomly rotated. So if you have a bunch of dots here for the shape, those dots are gonna get randomly stamped on and rotated giving you a nice organic grain or a noise brush. So let's go ahead and go to edit here under the shape source and go to import. And I'm gonna import a file. So I have a grain brush here, it's just a bunch of dots. And if you do wanna import your own textures, I'll show you that at the end of the video, how to create and import your own textures. And now if you wanna invert this, all you have to do is tap with two fingers and you can invert the colors. So on the right here, it gives you a little preview of kind of what it'll look like when you do a brush stroke and right now you can see it's way too repeated so we can fix that in a few ways uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to turn scatter up and you'll see instantly it starts to randomly rotate each of those strokes and when i say strokes let me show you what i mean if i go to stroke path here there's a spacing attribute so now if i increase that a lot and now if i go ahead and draw you'll see every now and then it's going to randomly stamp on that pattern. And then if we lower the spacing, it kind of brings everything together so it stamps much more often, giving you a nice smooth flow. Now you can leave everything as is, but I also like to turn on flip X and flip Y. So it'll randomly flip the texture in uh, vertically or horizontally, which get, just helps give a little extra uh, randomization. And I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like if I hit done. Now here's a very exaggerated look at it. So you can kind of see we get this nice grain pattern and you can kind of layer it on itself to get it nice and dark. Obviously that's a bit big, so what I would probably do in this case is scale it down a bit. And now you have a nice grain brush to use. And one other thing I like to do is instead of just using dots, sometimes you can use a texture. For example, I'll bring in another file. So here I have a texture of uh, pebbles based on a photo that I manipulated. I'll show you that a bit later in the video. And this kind of brush gives a much softer kind of noise, but it still gives you that random feeling, which I, I really like. So looking at the next brush, the more static texture brush, 
let's go ahead and create another airbrush. I'll duplicate the soft brush. And now instead of shape, you're actually gonna be leaving that as is, and you're gonna be going to the grain section. And here's where you're gonna put in a seamless black and white texture map. So here I'm gonna choose a cliff texture. Now you're not gonna see much right now, but we're gonna have to make some changes. So first of all, I like to bring movement all the way up to 100, same with zoom. And now once you start increasing scale, you'll see on the right hand side, you'll be able to start seeing that texture. And if I start painting with this one, you'll be able to see that texture. And it's not so random anymore, you're really seeing that texture. So just imagine this texture already exists across the entire canvas and you're just kind of using the brush to reveal that texture in certain areas. And if you notice, when you change the brush size, it does not actually change the scale of the texture. Again, you're just revealing it in certain areas. Whereas with the grain brush, it will actually change depending on your brush size. Next up, I'll show you how you can create your own uh, textures. But just so you know, uh, if you go to import a texture, there is this source library here that everybody has access to. And there's a bunch of textures already in here for you that you can use, and they're all really great actually. So you don't really need to go ahead and create your own. You can just use one of these. Okay, so I switched over to Photoshop on my desktop, and it's pretty simple to create your own textures. So if you wanna create kind of a classic grain texture or noise texture brush, all you really need to do is uh, go ahead and select your brush. And I like using, um, let's see, uh, just a hard round brush. And basically all you're gonna do is make a few dots. So for example, like this, just kind of scatter it around. And that's honestly all you really need to get started. So if you import that into the shape slot, uh, like, like I showed earlier in Procreate, uh, that'll give you a pretty nice grain brush. And then where it gets interesting is if you start creating variations of this. So for example, we could take this, duplicate it, we could bring the opacity down and then kind of move it around. And then you can create different sizes and different shapes and just mess around. And that's part of the fun of it is just trying different things and you might stumble upon something really cool. So go ahead and experiment and hopefully you can find something that you like using. Now, if you want kind of that softer noise pattern that I showed earlier, uh, you can do that by using some photos. So for example, I found a photo here of some rocks or some gravel. I find that works really well. So you can either take these kind of photos yourself or if you just search Google for these kind of images, you'll be able to find a ton. Just search for free texture images. Um, there's a lot out there. So if I take this one, for example, the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is desaturate it. So I'm gonna go to image adjustments, desaturate. And now I wanna kind of crush the blacks a little bit. So I'm gonna to go to image adjustments levels. And now you can bring up this left slider to kind of crush the blacks a little bit, kind of exaggerate them. And I'm gonna bring up the whites a little bit on the other side. Okay. And now if you remember, it's gonna stamp this image on a lot. So you don't want anything with these hard edges because you're gonna see these square shapes getting stamped on. So we wanna create a nice uh, soft brush with a fall off. So what I'm gonna do is create a new layer, grab my elliptical marquee tool and draw a shape. Put it in the center. Now I'm gonna to go to select inverse. And now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my paint bucket with a black color and fill that so we get something like that. And now I'm gonna to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm blur that a lot, but this isn't dark enough because these edges still have some information and you're gonna see those hard edges. So I'm just gonna duplicate this layer a, little, a few times. And there we go. This is a nice soft brush that'll give you some very organic and soft noise. Now for the static texture brush, if you wanna create your own textures for that, again, you can shoot your own or just search Google for free textures or free seamless textures. And the key with this, other than desaturating it, is you do want it to be a seamless image, meaning when you put one after another side by side of these, you want it to be continuous and you don't wanna see a seam. So this image is not seamless. 
And in order to check that and fix it, what you can do is go up to filter, other, offset, and you're gonna zero everything out to start. And now if I start moving this vertical slider little by little, you'll see it's shifting the entire image down, which is what we want. And we wanna bring basically that top edge toward the middle somewhere. So now if I hit okay, and if I zoom in, you'll be able to see what I mean. You're gonna see that seam there, which we don't want, because that's gonna be visible. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Filter offset, zero everything out. And I'm gonna do the same with horizontal. Bring that left edge in to the center. So we can see all the seams now. And all we have to do is paint those out. And a good way to do that is just create a new layer and grab the uh, clone stamp tool and just make sure it's set to current and below. That means it's gonna affect this layer and the layer beneath it. And just make sure it's set to kind of a soft brush. And then all you're gonna do is zoom in. And if you hit Alt, you'll see a little uh, crosshair and that's where it's gonna sample from. So you wanna sample from a clean area that doesn't have any seams. So you're gonna hold down Alt and click and then go to a area with a seam and you're gonna go ahead and click and it's going to take that sampled area and paint it where your current cursor is. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do a lot of sampling. So for example, I'm gonna sample, paint a little, sample, paint a little, find another seam area, sample nearby, paint a little bit, sample, paint. I'm gonna continue that process until I get rid of all the seams. Now this is by no means perfect, but this is gonna do the job just fine for what we want. So now you're gonna zoom out and kinda see if you see any noticeable areas, repeating areas. You can go ahead and do some bigger corrections if you want. And that looks pretty good. So now if we go ahead and go layer flatten image, and I'm gonna test out the offset thing again. So I'm zero everything out and start shifting it. And you'll see now we see no seams anywhere. And that's exactly what we want. And now we have a seamless texture image that we can bring in and use for our static texture brush. So that does it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next tutorial.